Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to show you how to successfully grow and germinate tomato plants. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the soil. So the soil that you're using to germinate the plants is quite important. I have two samples here. The one on the left is seed and cutting compost. The one on the right is general multi-purpose compost. And for the sake of germinating seeds it's really important that you get the right compost. And I'll go through you now the two differences between seed and cutting compost and general multipurpose compost. So looking first of all at the general multipurpose compost, you can see that there's quite a few lard pieces in here. It's also purely made out of peat and, and uh, rotten materials, there's not any sand or silt or anything. Also when this gets wet it holds a lot of moisture, that can lead to rotting in the seeds. The large lumps like this means that if a seed tries to germinate and it root hits that, or if it tries to germinate and it comes up against it, it's not going to find it easy to grow through the soil mixture if there's any large lumps. So that's general purpose compost. That's good for mature plants, but it's not really good for seeds. And the other issue with it is it's got quite a lot of fertilizer in it. Fertilizer is good for plants to, whilst they're growing, but unfortunately it actually inhibits the, the germination process. So this is a seed and cutting compost. As you can see by comparison, the particle sizes are much, much smaller. This is made up with loam, a tiny bit of peat, and quite a bit of sand. So it's very free draining, but it also holds enough moisture for the seeds to germinate. That means the seeds won't rot off and they won't dry out too quickly either. You'll notice it has a very fine structure. There's no large pieces in here. That's so the seeds can easily put the roots down to the soil and they can grow up with the new shoots as well. And also this, is, this hasn't got any feed added to it. So if you planted a normal plant in here, it would struggle to grow. But for the germination process, this is spot on. And generally you'll keep the plant in this for a few weeks just until it develops the secondary leaves and then it's ready to go on to the multi-purpose compost. But whilst it's germinating, what you want is the seed compost to begin with. So the next stage is once you've got the correct potting mix for your plant, is to use the seed and cutting compost and fill up your, the container where you're going to be growing your plants. And you want to fill it almost to the top. Tomato seeds don't like to be buried too deep. So I'll show you what kind of depth is required. So you want to fill them up almost to the top, but you want to leave about a centimeter of space. And you want to be careful not to push down the compost at all. You can smooth it across, but you don't want to push it down. So these in the middle are a bit too high, so I'm just going to empty them a bit into some of the shallower ones. And just so I've got about a centimetre of space in all the pots. So there we are, that's the soil about right. Now you might notice that sometimes, even though it's a, it's a good compost mix, you may get lumps like this. If you just break them up, make sure that they're, they're finely ground so they don't have any large things that are going to be getting in the way. And even occasionally you might get a big piece like this. So just remove them, make sure the compost is nice and fine. And you've got about a centimetre space in, in each pot. And then you're ready for the seeds. So the one I'm going to be planting in this video is the variety Ildi. This is a nice cherry tomato with a very tangy kind of, kind of flavour. So your tomato seeds will come probably in a small foil packet such as this. Simply open the packet and you have to be careful because the seeds are quite small and they can be quite easy to lose. And I'll just show you now the kind of size of the seeds. You'll also won't get many in a pack of tomato seeds. Tomato seeds generally you don't need a lot of plants to produce a lot of tomatoes so you're going to get a few seeds in each pack. You can probably see in this one here you've probably only got about 30 or so seeds. So what I'd recommend doing is sowing them gently onto your hand so you can see what you've got. As you can see there the seeds are very small in size. They're not the smallest of seeds, but they're still quite hard to work with. So very carefully, you can either tap your hand until they tap out. But what I find is I just pick them up by hand and you want to plant one or two seeds in each pot. Now, if you're planting two seeds in each pot, you will want to remove one of them afterwards. So once they've germinated, you want to remove the weakest plant. Your other option is do what I'm doing, which is plant one seed in each pot. And then it just means that some of the pots that don't germinate, you'll just have to, to chuck that compost out and, um, and use it elsewhere because that seed hasn't germinated. So if you're short of space, I would, I would put two seeds in each pot. And if you've got plenty of seeds, but if you don't have as many seeds and you, don't have as, as, and you have plenty of space, then I would put one seed in each one. So as you can see, I'm just carefully placing the seed in the center of each pot. So there we are remembering that any excess seeds that I still have on my hand to carefully put them back in the packet before I forget about them because it's very easy to forget these seeds 
and they're, they're so easily lost because they're quite small. So there we are, that's the, um, the season now placed on the surface. You can see they're all just about in the middle of each pot. So the next thing to do is cover them in a thin layer of compost. They like to be buried roughly two to three times the depth of, their, of, of, of the thickness of the seed. So as you can see from this, that's only about half a centimetre, maybe five millimetres or so. So what you want to get is a very fine sieve and sieve on the, the compost. That helps to get rid of any other lumps which might inhibit the germination. So what I have here is I have a very fine sieve. You can see there, it's quite a small, small size. I'm just going to place that on the surface and I'm just going to dust over all the pots with compost. Now because this sieve is so fine, the compost isn't actually going through at the moment. So what I'll need to do is actually agitate it a bit to make sure that it goes through. If you're using a slightly uh, larger sieve or the material you're using is finer, then it should go through by itself. But in this instance, I'll just have to push it through to make sure it goes through to each pot. As you can see, there's plenty of larger pieces which are left behind, and that's the reason you're using the sieve, is because you don't want any of these large pieces staying in the compost. And even with the best quality seed and cutting compost, you'll still get these pieces, these larger pieces. So once I've done that, I'll just double check that they're all covered. It looks quite good. I'll just give it a, a tap down as well. And then the next process is you need to water your seeds to make sure that the compost is nice and damp for them. So when it comes to watering your compost after you've sown your seeds, you have to be very careful because a normal watering can will wash the seeds around in the compost and it will either bury the seeds too deep, bring them close to the surface, or could completely wash them out of the pot. So you should never water on the top with a normal watering can. Now if you have a very fine rose in your watering can for seedlings, you can use that. The other option is to keep misting the plants until the compost comes down, but that can take quite a long time. It's a lot of misting is needed to fully saturate the compost. So the method that I use is I put the pots in a tray such as this. I then fill up the tray with water. I leave this to sit for about half an hour or so. And what that does is it allows the water to slowly come up into the pots without washing away any of the seeds. So I'll probably fill it up to about half the, the distance on the, on the pot. So the pot is covered about half. That means that the water has enough pressure to come in and it will water the whole pot. If you have it too high, what can happen is water will come up and the seed will actually float out and it will move the seed. So there we are, I'll leave that for half an hour. And then we'll go on to the next stage, which will be the germination phase. So now these have been soaking for half an hour, you can see that they're definitely a lot darker in colour. That's because they've absorbed a lot more water. And one thing to look out for is occasionally what can happen is the compost can rehydrate at different rates and that means that it lifts up in different places at different times and occasionally this can push the seed to the surface. If this does happen, just pop it back underground and it should be fine. So the next stage is I'm going to transfer these into a tray just to make it easier for moving them around and then I'll be popping them in my propagator. So here are the plants in the propagator. So one more thing to add before you put them in is you should always write a plant label. Now it might seem quite obvious that you need to label what the plant is, but it's quite easy to forget and once it's in the pots and you've got other pots in the propagator and around the house and a few days later you'll forget what you put in them and um, you'll have no idea what you're growing. So it's very important to put, put the plant. Name the type of plant and the, the variety but on the other side you should also put the, the date that you actually, germ, you actually sowed them. The reason for that is you put them in the, this propagator and you don't know how long it's been in there. If these don't germinate after a few weeks you can probably pretty much guarantee that no more are going to germinate. So you look at the, the time that you did it, or should I say the day, and if it's been several weeks and half of them have germinated but the other half haven't, then you know it's, it's been long enough, no more are going to germinate. You can take them out and get some other ones. Otherwise what will happen is you'll leave them in there for months and then that's just a waste of space. So this is my propagator. It's an electronically heated one. You see here it's got the cable. The bottom is heated so you get a nice bottom heat which is good because that heats up the soil which is where the seeds are. And then what I have is a see-through plastic cover that allows light to come in but also holds in the heat and the humidity. So I put that on top. Now it's very important with tomato seeds, not so much for other plants but any tropical plant and especially tomatoes is they actually need a lot of heat to, to have successful germination. So I'm going to be having this about 30 degrees. You can change the temperature on certain types of electronic propagators 
If you don't have an electronic propagator, just find the warmest place you can, somewhere that's about 30 degrees constantly. It doesn't actually need any light because until they germinate, they don't actually need any sunshine on them. But as soon as they germinate, they do need light. So I would recommend them putting them in a light place, unless you're gonna be checking them every day. Put them somewhere that's nice and sunny so when they do come up, they get the light that they need and keep them nice and warm. Now, a lot of the seed catalogs and the seed packets will probably say about 15 to 25 or 20 degrees is the best temperature. I actually find a lot warmer temperature does a lot better. You'll have them germinate much faster. I've actually had some seeds, not tomato seeds, but I've had other seeds germinate within 24 hours. So a high temperature is definitely very good. As I say, 30 degrees is the best. I wouldn't really go much over 35. That would be too much for the plant. It could actually cause problems. So there we are. I'll leave this in here now. I'll come back in a few days time and let you see how well they've germinated. So it's been about six days now and that's about the average time you'd expect a, the first lot of germination to come up on your tomato seeds. If it's done properly they should germinate pretty much all at the same time but there's a lot of different variables which can mean that it, they don't always germinate at exactly the same speed. So for example on this tray here I've, had, I've actually had 100% germination which is, is not always that common but um, you can be lucky sometimes to get 100%. So as you can see a lot of them they're all different kind of stages so this one here as you can see is only just starting to come up and this one here that little white speck is just the beginning of a root starting to form so you can see that they are at different stages although most of them have grown through straight away the roots aren't at the bottom yet um, but there's definitely plenty of growth in the top half now because these are actually growing in individual pots I'm going to leave them in their pots for a bit longer you can see they're very leggy that's because it hasn't been enough sunshine because it's it's quite dark where I've been growing them unfortunately but if you can give them as much light as possible because you really want them to grow well if you're living in the tropics I wouldn't give them the midday sun because that's probably too hot for a young seedling but certainly if you're in the northern hemisphere and you're sowing tomatoes in the winter give them as much sunlight as you can possibly get so as you can see they're very leggy now now to get to overcome the legginess what you can do is plant them a lot deeper tomatoes are very good that they um, they root along the stem and planting them a lot deeper than the original height causes them no issues on other plants this can be a problem if you plant them too deep but with tomatoes it's actually a beneficial thing so what i'm going to show you now is if you planted them instead of in individual pots if you planted them in, in a seed tray or in one pot and you've got several seedlings coming out of that area what you then need to do is as soon as they've germinated like this is prick them out take them out individually and put them in new pots so i'll show you that now exactly how you do that so i've now got my pots set up one more thing I was going to add before I continue at this stage is when you have these growing in the propagator you want to start off with the propagator with all the vents closed and as high heat as possible. Now as soon as you see any germination occurring you want to then open the vents to make sure that these start hardening off because if these grow in very humid conditions and then go straight out of the propagator they'll probably suffer quite a bit of stress because they're used to humid conditions and then they're not used to the drier conditions. So then you keep it open as, as much as you keep all the vents open and then a few days before you actually go ahead with the, um, the moving it out of the propagator, you lift the lid up a little bit to let in a lot more air so that it can get more cl climatized to the dry atmosphere. So the compost I've gone for is a slightly richer mix than what was the seed compost. So you do need a little bit of feed now because now that they've germinated, they've got all the feed that they had in the seeds and they're now going to take up feed from the roots. So you want something with low feed you still don't want to be really high feed yet because really high feed it could actually damage them could burn their roots so what i've done is i've got actually for my mix is a half multi-purpose compost which had feed added i've then put in half of my own topsoil which is a very sandy topsoil which is perfect for seedlings and then i put in a couple of handfuls of perlite the perlite is just for added drainage and the benefit of using some of your own soil is that it, when they you finally plant them in the soil they'll be more acclimatized to that and there won't be less of a shock and they'll be used to it already if you plant it in grow bags then you don't need to include your own soil and including your own soil can introduce problems of its own if they've if you've had um, tomatoes in that soil in the past then you could have diseases from that soil and there's probably also weed seeds as well but if you know that you've you haven't got many, too many weed seeds in it and you haven't grown tomatoes in that soil before then it's quite a good idea idea to use your own soil so what i'm going to do now is first of all i'm going to take out the label make sure that's prop properly put in the um the nearby pot so i know what they are so i'm just going to get this set up now so taking a, a small stick or a pencil or what i'm using here is an old plant label 
you want to very carefully choose choose the one you're going for so i'm going to go for this one now it's best to pick it up by the leaf and the reason for that is if you damage the leaf the plant will still survive it won't be killed but if you damage the stem there's a good chance that it will be killed off so you don't want to damage the stem but damaging a leaf is not the end of the world so you want to very gently pull up put the dipper down quite deep and just tease it out as so you don't want to lose any soil if you can help it so there you are you can see it's only got a very small root on that one there you are so what i'm going to do now is actually make quite a deep hole in here and as i said before because these are leggy i'm going to plant them very deep and they they do quite well so get, with the dibber i'm going to guide it into the hole because what can happen is it can stick to the hole and the root doesn't go to the bottom so i'm just going to make sure that happens and then i'm going to bury it quite high up so you can see there it's a much shorter sprout i'll do that one more time and i'm going to see if i can get it a little bit deeper this time so i'm going to make sure the hole is ready because the, the, le the less time that the, these, these are out of the soil, the better, because the roots can dry up and cause issues. So I've made my little hole, and then selected which seedling I'm using, carefully putting this, the dibber down about a centimetre away from the root so it doesn't d damage any of the roots, gently pulling up so it comes out there. And then with the, this, the dibber, I'm just going to make sure it guides the root down to the bottom, like so, and then carefully fill in around it with the compost and there you can go all the way almost to the to the leaves and it's not an issue so you can see there you've got a nice short healthy stocky plant which can survive a bit of wind and, and, and weather whereas these are just too leggy and they're going to flop around and these will, as i say that all this, the stems will root along that and do well so all I, all I need to do now is continue potting these up then give them a good watering to make sure that, that these the, the the soil is also damp enough but also that when you water it, it helps the compost to, to move around the roots and it gets rid of any air spaces, which can become an issue for, for the young roots. So that's all you need to do for now. And these will probably stay in here for probably about two or three weeks until they get to it about, probably about 10, 15 centimetres.